many moons ago there lived a boy named Sultan in Baghdad who had spent his childhood traveling far and near. His mom and dad passed away in his childhood and he had to struggle a lot to move ahead in his life. This is why he would get deeply saddened and when he would sit at the seashore for long hours. One day he was sitting on the seashore and he was wishing that there was a miracle where he could become the richest man so that he didn't have to face the same poverty he had faced. He was tired of being a vagabond for scraps. Wondering this started praying to the God and then he sat down quietly at the seashore. After some time he found a beautiful glass bottle coming towards him on the shore. That glass bottle was sealed with a cork and inside that bottle there was a paper on which something was written. As soon as Sultan opened the cork of the bottle, just then a genie came out of the bottle. Startled Sultan fell down on the ground. Just then the genie said, Your wish is my command. From this day onwards, I am at your service. I will be at your service till the last time, till the time I grant you three wishes. But make it sure, I can only grant you three wishes. After listening to Genie, Sultan understood that he is the master of his fate. Sultan realized that he had got the biggest miracle that he was wishing for. Is it so? So you are saying that you can grant my wishes? Yes, yes master, but I can only grant you three wishes. <laughs> Sultan then asked his very first wish. Alright, I want you to make me a house that is the finest of all in the entire world and anyone who looks at my house remains stunned at its beauty and this is my first wish. Right then, the genie started swirling in the air and soon it looked like a tornado. Genie took Sultan away to a foreign land which was a beautiful place and then he asked Sultan Is this place good for your mansion master? What do you think? Genie took Sultan to such a place which was absolutely breathtaking. Seeing that place, Sultan said, I am just stunned by the beauty of this place. Yes, you can make a house here. As soon as Sultan said this, it started thundering all around the place. With a wink of an eye, a mansion started building in thin air. After some time, Sultan's mansion was completely ready. And once this was done, Genie reminded Sultan, Master, I have granted you the first wish. Now you are just left with two wishes. If you want, you can immediately wish for your next wishes. Are you ready for your next wish? <laughs> no, no, not now. I will think about it and then I will ask you to grant my wish. Now, Sultan had his own mansion in which he started living in luxury. Now he had servants, maids and even the great chefs to make him delicious food. Now Sultan started thinking what next must he wish from Genie. Pondering on the same, he started to walk towards the market. There he saw children who were extremely hungry and they were begging on the streets. Seeing those children, Sultan was reminded of his own childhood. There was a time when out of poverty he had to survive like these kids. That's why he got sad seeing them. He wanted to do something for them. He went back to palace and he told Genie, Hey Genie, I want you to grant my second wish. I need it now. Yes master, your wish is my command. Sultan asked his second wish from Genie. My second wish is that not a single child is left unfeed. They don't have to beg for food from others. Grant my wish. Genie heard Sultan's wish. Genie heard Sultan's second wish and granted it. Genie said to him, Master, your second wish is granted. Now you are left with only one wish. Do you want to ask for third wish right now? If you want, I can grant it now. No, no. No, I will think about my third wish as well. 
Now Sultan was happy that he had his own mansion and even the children were not hungry anymore. Now Sultan was reminded of his third and last wish but he was also thinking that if he asks for a third wish then what will happen next will that genie go away or something else will happen now that sultan was thinking about this what was next just then he remembered there was a paper inside the bottle on which something was written he immediately started searching for his bottle everywhere just when he got his bottle he pulled out the paper and he began to read the letter any human being can ask for three wishes to be granted from genie but once after the third wish is granted that human being will be imprisoned in that bottle for eternity of his life and that genie will be set free sultan was scared for his life he begins to think what he will do next just then he came up with a plan he invoked the genie genie appeared right in front of his eyes and he asked your wish is my command master oh genie i want to fulfill my last wish the moment the genie heard this he couldn't contain his happiness genie started to think that he will now be finally free from that suffocating bottle then sultan asked for his third wish now the third wish is that you will be my slave for eternity and once i die you will go back in the bottle once again and this is my last and final wish on hearing this genie was screaming with anger but he couldn't do anything if he refused to do so then he had to perish in the nine circles of hell In the village of Galena there lived a boy Harry. He lived with his mother Jimmy and father Oliver. Whole family was dependent on Oliver. Their son Harry never worked for anything. Harry, you should do some job. You neither study nor you are getting a job. How will this work? Dad, I will find a job, but I won't study. Jimmy, look what your son is saying. Harry, why do you say such things? That will hurt your dad. Mom, what did I do now? Watching his lazy behavior, his parents thought of teaching him a lesson. Harry, if you don't want to study, it's okay. At least do some job. Now you don't have any problem with this, right? No. We will not listen to any of your excuses now. You will have to do whatever your dad says, okay? Yes. Thinking about this, Harry goes out of his house. What do I do now to earn money now? He starts walking toward forest. Later, he sees a garden of roses. Seeing these flowers, he gets attracted towards them and walks inside the garden. Then he hears a sound. Help! Help! Or I'll die. Somebody help me. Please help. Who's there? Ram saw a man holding his leg. What happened to you? Why are you shouting? Son help me a snake bite me take me to the hospital sure don't worry i will take you to the hospital stay calm harry takes that man to the hospital and gets him treated then he goes home after admitting him to the hospital suddenly he remembers what his parents said if he couldn't find a job then he will have to study hmm i didn't earn any money or get any job What should I do now? On his way home, he went near the same garden where he found lots of roses. Garden owner was standing there. Harry went to him. "Who are you and how you got here?" "I was passing by and saw a gardener was bite by snake and took him to hospital and now I am going home." "What? Gardener got bite by a snake? How my work will be done now? Who will do my work?" If uh, you are okay may I do it for you Sure you can do it but I'll give you 100 rupees a day and work should be good Yes sir it will work for me You have to take good care of this garden so it grows well understood If I find any mistake I will fire you Okay sir it's fine Harry returns home and tells this good news to his parents Son 
I'm so happy that you did something. Harry, do your work with your full heart, okay? Okay, Dad. From next day, Harry started working there. He understood all the work there pretty well. Watching his hard work, garden owner was happy from him. He even gave a raise to Harry. Now Harry started taking good care of the garden. He even planted a rose plant there. After a few days, that rose plant grew, but its color was weird. Huh? What's this weird plant? Hmm, whatever it is, let's see what type of flower it grows. Like other plants, Harry started taking care of that plant too. Slowly, that plant grew big and it grew a flower. Flower was weird in color. Harry really liked that flower and he started spending more time with that plant. That day, he returned home after work. Next day, when he was going from work, his father suddenly fell sick. He started feeling dizzy. Harry took him to the hospital. Harry, son, what happened to your dad? Mom, let me talk to doctor. I'll tell you. Harry talks to doctor. Doctor, what happened to my dad? Harry, your father got a heart attack. We need to operate quickly. Pay 1 lakh rupees on the counter. Doctor, I don't have this much money. I can't pay 1 lakh rupees. Couldn't it be less? This is the first installment. There is still more. How much will it be, doctor? Around 4 to 5 lakhs. After this, doctor goes away. Harry is now worried because he doesn't have this much money. Son, what has happened to your dad? Tell me. Dad got a heart attack, mom. It needs to be operated. I'll be back. You stay here with dad. Okay, son. Harry now goes to the garden owner. What happened, Harry? Why are you crying? Sir, my dad got a heart attack. I need some money. How much money do you need? Sir, I need 1 lakh rupees. I need to pay today in hospital. Will you help me? I can give you only 10,000. I don't have more. Okay, sir. Harry is now deeply worried what to do next. He couldn't pay for his dad's operation. While thinking about this, he sat near that plant and started crying. Suddenly, he heard a voice. Harry! Hey, Harry! It's me! Uh, who's there? Whose voice it is? Harry, I am that weird looking flower. Look here! Harry looks at flower with curiosity. Can you speak? Yes, I can speak. I'm a magical flower. What happened to you? Why are you crying? Magical flower, my dad got heart attack. I don't have money for his operation. What should I do now? Harry, stop crying. I'll help you. Will you really help me? With its magic, Flower gives Harry lots of money. Harry happily takes that money and goes to the hospital and gets his dad treated. Few days pass. Harry gets his dad well treated. Dad is now well and Harry takes him back home. Harry, how did you manage this much money? We didn't have this much money. Yes, Harry. How did you manage so much money? Harry tells everything about the magical flower to his parents. Harry, truly this is the blessing of God, son. That's why we could survive through such a bad time. Yes, mom. Harry goes in the garden and tells flower. Magical flower, will you come to my house? We will take good care of you. Harry, I am ready to go with you. Take me to your home with the first rays of the sun. Okay? Whatever you say. Next day, Harry brings magical flower to his home as soon as he wakes up, plants it in his garden and take good care of him. With the blessing of the magical flower, Harry and his family live a happy life. They don't feel lack of anything. With this, Harry helps other people too. In a village named Shamnagar, there lived three best friends, Sudha, Sheila and Meera. They all studied together in a school. They all were best friends. Sudha and Sheila were extremely rich friends. Sudha was a carefree and cool girl and Sheila was extremely stingy. Whereas Meera was from a poor family, Sheila and Sudha never made Meera feel that she was poor. 
Now, all three of them were adults. Once they completed their graduation, they were pursuing their prospective careers. Like this, days passed. One day, when Meera was getting ready to go back to work, when she got a call from Sheila. Then Meera. Hey, hi Sheila, how are you? You called me after such a long time. Are you done with your breakfast? How did you know that I was having my breakfast? Your home cooked breakfast is wonderful and it's our life. What an aroma! Wow, super! It's amazing! Yes, you only talk and never show up. You only invite people to your house. This is not done. Wait, I'm going to call Sudha right now. Sudha picks up the call. Hi guys, what's going on? It seems that Queen has just woken up. The party actually continued into the wee hours of last night, which is why I just got up. Now, how will this girl remember us if she attends so many parties? No, no, you both are my best friends and my life would be so boring without you guys. At this point, everyone begins to chuckle and Sudha continues. Meera, we haven't eaten any of your meals you made in so long. Therefore, we will only meet this time at your home. Yes, that is why we called you. After the seven days had ended, Sheila and Sudha visit Meera's home. Sheila and Sudha were horrified to see there were two police officers guarding Meera's home. But neither of them approached Meera to inquire further. They now sat down and gave each other hugs before talking. Meera, will you keep talking or will you even bring something to eat? Yes, yes, I'm bringing it. I've been making your preferred breakfast since morning. What are you waiting for? Bring it right away. While enjoying their breakfast together, Meera, Sheila and Sudha decide to take a trip. At that point, Sudha said, let's plan something different. Let's go for a trip at this time. How's the idea? Oh, no, no. If we travel, a lot of money will be spent. And you are aware of how much I hate spending money on unnecessary things. You haven't changed a bit, you miser. Sheila and Meera burst out laughing as Sudha said this. When Sheila further said, Okay, okay, fine. Okay then, let's go for shopping. The group quickly gathers at Sudha's place on the second day, after which they go on an extensive shopping spree. Sudha was carelessly wasting money while shopping and Sheila noticed her. Sudha, please, cut back on your spending. You were paying the same price as the merchant. Are you aware that I just saved your 3000 rupees today? And why did you feel the need to carry around so much cash? When will you get better? I don't know. What? Did you actually save my 3000 rupees today? If we work, we should value money as well. If you have a card, why do you need to carry so much cash? Sheila, don't start now. I know that. You're stingy and I am not. As the three friends were talking, suddenly a bike came from behind and quickly snatched away Sudha's purse. Sudha started screaming loudly. Oh no, not my purse. Once I get you in my hands, then you will see. See? See? Didn't I tell you? On the other side, Meera called someone and the cops arrive in no time, handing Sudha's purse to Meera. As much as we searched for this criminal for a long time, madam, we only managed to catch him today thanks to the awareness. As he said this, the officers gave Meera a salute. Seeing this, Sudha and Sheila were astounded. Meera, you are… Yes, I am the PSI of the city. Now Sudha and Sheila also salute Meera and they go home together and have a lot of fun. They start meeting each other. In the village of Samparknagar, there was an elderly dweller by the name of Damodar. His wife, sons, daughters-in-law and grandchildren all resided with him, making up a sizable family. He cherished his family dearly and renovated his house to make it more convenient for them to ensure that they all could enjoy the finest cuisine at their home. Damodar hired Changilal, a renowned chef. Changilal, see, I went grocery shopping all by myself. 
I have yam. Can you prepare it exactly as your mother desires? Yes, sir. Changi Lal was working for Damodar for the past 15 years. They were just like a father and son duo. And the reason behind this was Damodar's enormous family. It was a living nightmare for any cook. They would simply refuse to work there. Changi Lal was the only one who survived it. At first, he used to take care of the family's health, but now he became unscrupulous. One day when he was catching up with his servants from the other house friend Changi Lal do you know that i have conned my master out of 20 dollars and he was completely unaware of it damodar sir is so sweet that he won't mind you taking a little change yes my brother i believe that you should also learn how to deceive people you too must make the most of your life what are you saying I never felt lacking anything thanks to Damodar sir what's the point of cheating someone if i have everything see this is the issue with you now champu explain it to this dolt now changi no one could possibly survive that enormous family and the money you are getting is simply not worth it try to understand what i am telling you why don't you try to steal some of their money anyway you are so nice that you won't ask any money from them moreover You have your own share of joy and sorrow. Changi Lal's astute friends took advantage of his vulnerability and manipulated him. Changi Lal, however, ignored their advice and returned home. That night, he prepared some delicacies and served them to Damodar's entire family. Everyone began eating, and Changi Lal stood in the kitchen watching them. The grandson then spoke up. Grandpa. Don't you think Changi uncle is just giving us bland soup? Does he not know how to make a spicy stew? Hmm. It appears that even your Changi uncle is getting old like me. Everyone burst out laughing after hearing his witty remark. Damodar would crack hilarious jokes with his grandchildren and daughters to keep them from making a fuss over healthy food. Even Changi Lal was aware of this, but the remark seemed to hurt him today. Changi Lal thought to himself as he was doing the dishes after the dinner. Who knows what pleasures he get from making fun of me? I am constantly working day and night. I prepare meals for the entire family even Changi when I am Lal sick. Changi Lal was enraged and this is what at Damodar and his family. He goes to the market the next day to buy vegetables. But today when buying the vegetables he had the idea to con Damodar Changi Lal purchased old and stale vegetables in order to save money for himself he began to defend himself by saying Since I am the only one who can put up with their tantrum at least I can keep the spare money with me if there were anyone else they would have already fled As he came from the market and cooked those stale vegetables, he kept an eye on each family member to see if they could tell the difference. Changi Lal on other hand chuckled to himself because no one seemed to notice. He now believes that he can let his head down on this. Following supper, as he was speaking to himself, I shall purchase this stale and rotten vegetables and even get to retain the extra cash. Changi Lal started saving money from the rotting and stale veggies he was buying all the time. Damodar never asked him for the remaining money which allowed him to save a lot of money. But after a few days Damodar's wife had a burning fever and began experiencing stomach ache. Apart from Damodar and his wife nobody was home that day. Damodar calls Changi Lal. Changi Lal? Hey Changi Lal. Come over right now. My wife is writhing in pain. Changi Lal quickly came to that room after hearing the mother's cries. He quickly responded, "Ma'am, sir, what is this going on with you? Don't worry, ma'am. I'll call a doctor right away." Damodar's house was quickly visited. A doctor quickly visited Damodar's house who informed him that she needed to be hospitalized right away. Changi Lal and Damodar were stunned after hearing this. 
However, they took action on doctor's advice and admitted her to the hospital. After a thorough examination in the hospital, it was found that she had food poisoning. Damodar was dumbfounded and Changilal, he felt as if someone had shot him in the heart. He walks out of the hospital and starts crying. It's all my fault. It is all because of those cheap, stale and rotten vegetables that today ma'am is hospitalized. What do I do now? I pray that everything works out for the best for ma'am. He was mindlessly walking through the streets while talking to himself. He was completely distracted and lost in his own thoughts when a car came from behind and hit and ran over him. When he opens his eyes, he notices Damodar sitting right next to him. Changi Lal, are you all right? How are you doing? Sir, how is madam? I am doing really fine, son. You made me so worried when he informed me that you met with an accident. Sir, ma'am, this is all my fault. I was provoked by my friends to buy stale and rotten vegetables from the market. With that, I used to save up some money. I was swayed by my friends' opinions that I messed everything up. I am sorry. Damodar and his wife couldn't believe their own ears. But still, Damodar forgave him. Damodar then smiled and said, Chungi Lal, humans make mistakes and most importantly, your ma'am is healthy and well. It's now time for you to get better. I can't wait to have your delicious onion soup. Damodar opened the lid of the lunch box, tore a piece of bread and began feeding him. He said while feeding him, Eat the food that your ma'am has prepared for you. Changilal began to cry and he realized that bonds can be thicker than one's own blood. Who is she? She is the daughter of Elizabeth and Aiden. When Ronald looked closely at her, he noticed that she was glowing in the sunlight. Soon it was dark and the stars began to twinkle in the clear night sky. I think I must take my leave now. Just then, Eden arrived. Who is that man? He is a knight who is set out on a mission. His name is Ronald. Ronald, where are you going? I need to see King Richard immediately. You must go right now. This jungle is not safe for nighttime travel. You are welcome to stay with us for the night. You are extremely kind, sir. Aiden, Eve and Roland had returned home. Eve was relaxing in the backyard. Roland also arrived at that very moment and sat down next to her. Eventually, they struck up a conversation. Roland eventually went inside and slept there. When Aiden looked into her room, she was nowhere to be found. Roland awoke as he heard her voice coming from outside the house. Roland was astonished when he realized that Eve had been attacked by a lion and was bravely defending herself. With their combined intelligence, they both killed the lion. Roland returned home with Eve on seeing them coming back home. Elizabeth and Eden finally sighed in relief. Thank you so much, Roland. Roland and Eve were now in deep love with each other. Why are you going to the kingdom of King Richard? To search and kill the monster and to bring peace to the people of that kingdom. Okay then, I too shall go with you. No, I will go there alone and I promise you that I will surely come back to you. My love, don't worry. No, I too will come with you. Roland had no choice but to bring Eve with him. Eve and Roland both set out towards King Richard's kingdom. They were able to hear the monster's terrifying howls. The monster emerged from his cave when he saw Roland and Eve. With a lot of bravado, Roland and Eve taught the monster a lesson, captured him and brought him before King Richard. King Richard was incredibly amazed. From the bottom of his heart, he expressed his gratitude to Roland and Eve. The king suddenly saw a birthmark on Eve's hand that looked just like his daughter's and he instantly recognized it. My lady, what is your name? Can you call your parents here? Yes, your majesty. My name is Eve, but my parents live in a different kingdom. 
Just then, the king ordered his soldiers to go to the other kingdom and bring back Elizabeth and Aidan with all due respect. The servants brought both of them back to the kingdom of King Richard. When he finally saw his daughter Elizabeth, he was overjoyed. Due to my ego and pride, I had built a wall so strong between us and that's why you had to stay away from me for so long. Our entire kingdom is freed. Now, King Richard crowned Eve as the queen of the kingdom. After a few days, Eve and Roland were married. Now their entire family started living happily ever after. Due to the bravery and intelligence of Roland, they brought many changes in the kingdom for the welfare of the people. Even the subjects of the kingdom were elated to see those changes.